but it wouldn't be make-believe. Are the expectations of earnings make-believe like a paper moon? I do not know. David Bonson joins me on the Hugh Hewitt Show of the Bonson Group, financial advisor and money manager extraordinaire. Good morning, David. How are you? I'm great, Hugh. Good morning. I want to know first, France has got a hung parliament. They've got one third left, one third centrist, one third right. England has a new left wing government. Do any of those developments matter to American markets? They don't matter substantially other than what Europe has mattered for a long time, which is a model of what not to be and a warning to us of a potential path we could go. We have significant advantages. There is a fundamental cultural entrepreneurial DNA that has been in America since our Puritan forefathers. And I'm not saying this to get in a religious bend or even a cultural or political bend. This is economic, Hugh. Fundamentally, Europe's excessive indebtedness is a problem, but so is America's. Their bigger problem now is not just the political dysfunction. We're not exactly a beacon of political smoothness these days either. They don't want to work. They don't create. They don't innovate. That's had multi-decade impacts on their relevance to global financial markets. All right, so I'm going to put them aside and look to our own earnings season. I have two stories. Financial Times this morning Wall Street's upbeat earning expectations set high bar for U.S. companies. And I have one from the Wall Street Journal. Earning seasons to test investors' faith in big tech stocks. What do you expect for earning seasons, David Bonson? I would not predict exactly what will happen this earning season because I am a truth teller and nobody knows. And any other analyst who does answer your question isn't going to know either. They're going to guess. I can say something much more valuable, which is that the risk is entirely one way. There is a very good chance that companies, particularly the big tech ones that matter to the S&P 500 right now, because it's become essentially 41 percent technology and communication services. And if anyone thinks that the whole economy is 41 percent technology, they're crazy. So the S&P is basically right now one big um, lever on NVIDIA, more or less. And I think there's upside break even and downside risk. That's not a good trade. It's asymmetrical risk reward. Earnings could meet expectations, but I do not believe they can beat expectations. Oh, that's interesting. Now, is that across the board or is that as a sector? Um, Across the S&P 500, right now, the market is priced in 14% earnings growth year over year next year and double digit, low double digit earnings growth this year. It's unprecedented to believe we get that kind of consistency of earnings growth out of a Fed tightening cycle without any real obvious catalyst. Um, it just, to me, is, is priced for uh, a continued Pollyannish outcome. That could happen. Margins have stayed high. There's certain efficiencies. There's a cost of deglobalization. It hasn't really been discovered yet, but we haven't got a productivity enhancement yet. So I would just simply say that it's TBD where those profits come from. But do I think we're going to have 20% profit growth? Absolutely not. Yet the market's already trading at 23 times next year's earnings. So let's let's talk about Jerome Powell, who will be making marks today. What do you expect him to do, David? The smart thing to do would be to leave interest rates where they are, because we have not beaten in inflation. In fact, both of the oils, Brent and West Texas, are in the low 80s now. Do you expect Jerome Powell to do a politically nice thing for Joe Biden or Kamala Harris and cut rates? Hugh, I'm sorry, but if Jay Powell was going to be doing something nice for Joe Biden, it was time to do it a year ago. There is nothing on God's green earth Jay Powell can do to help Joe Biden. Cosmetically, one quarter of a point of a rate cut in September may very well get a bunch of people on the right to say it was to help Biden, but it doesn't do a thing. Um, Jay Powell has nothing to do with oil prices. No Fed chair has ever had anything to do with oil prices. They control money supply. They control the cost of capital. Oil is not part of that calculus. 
inflation has come down substantially, and it's not because of anything the Fed did, and God knows it's not because of anything the White House did. It came down because the world reopened and production of goods and services resumed, and Milton Friedman's law was once again proven true. That money, that when you have more money than you have goods and services, prices go up. Goods and services have come back. But, but Hugh, at the end of the day, the Fed knows that interest rates are above the natural rate right now and that they have gotten away with it because no one's paying the higher rates. Companies borrowed enough at the low rates. Mortgage holders are mostly still paying three, three and a half percent. It's the reset of rates that's the problem. That's what the Fed can't allow to happen. And they see unemployment slowly ticking up. And I think they cut rates 50 basis points between now and the end of the year, probably November, December. But the market seems to think it'll end up starting in September. I don't happen to think it matters exactly when they start. Now, David, I am an optimist about equities only because I expect Trump to win. And I expect a deregulation at least as energetic as occurred in the first Trump term because he'll be better at it. The people he brings with him will know what to do. Uh, the overreach by the Democrats will be assisted by the turning over of Chevron. So I'm an optimist, but for not because of interest rates, but because I do believe productivity is going to find itself boosted by a deregulatory environment. Am I nuts? No, you're not nuts. And you and I uh, see the world very similarly, as you know. We are both movement conservatives. So I want to remind my very longtime good friend, Hugh Hewitt, the president has almost nothing to do with markets and never has. Deregulation will help, and President Trump will be good for deregulation. But, Hugh, the worst performing sector under President Trump was energy, and he was the best president for energy of my lifetime. The best performing sector under Biden has been energy, and he was the worst president for energy of my lifetime. There are other factors that play into the way markets go because they're forward-looking mechanisms. And there's other issues with a, a Trump agenda we have to wonder about, too, as he has to posture and negotiate with the trade war issues as well. Markets have to kind of absorb a certain unpredictability and tariff prices and things as well. I am an optimist about markets because I'm an optimist about human freedom and the ability of people to innovate over time and do it profitably. But I don't think short-term politics is the catalyst. Uh, old well, you know, here's recommend- we're gonna, where we're going to disagree, David, is that uh-huh. I spent, well, while you were busy managing markets all those years I lived in California, I was out there representing developers before the EPA, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, the Army Corps of Engineers. Uh, no one can build anything in California. They can build everything in Florida. If we deregulate, America's home builders and America's manufacturers will rebuild. That's what I think. And Trump will be a yeah, signal. But Hugh, those, same, those, same home builders, those same home builders you represented primarily are still dealing with state and local. There's not anything President Trump can do about CUPs and, and about the CICA and about all the nonsense that they deal with in largely blue states. But it isn't just home builders. Across the board, deregulation helps. Deregulation, though, is a subsidy to somebody. The heavy regulation on energy helps Chevron and Exxon because the cost is primarily hurting smaller players. So markets price that in, Hugh, and absorb the impact of a regulatory state. Across the board, higher regulation is a cost to the economy. I fully agree. David Bonson, always good to talk to you. Keep coming back. Find David Bonson on exit. David Bonson. Watch him on Fox News, on CNBC, and wherever smart people gather to talk about markets. David Bonson, thank you. Let me uh, take